some off-duty Coasties are planning a cross-country trip in a golf cart. And tonight, they're going coast to coast on something you'd find at a clubhouse. Are carting for a cause. Active duty Coast Guard members driving across the country to raise awareness for veterans and injured soldiers. Turn right, one mile, Roger. To actually be on the road now after a year in the making is kind of uh, kind of cool. All right. Greetings. That's me and my lovely wife during my retirement ceremony from the Coast Guard. I was an electrician and served proudly for 25 years. In 2010, we were stationed at a Coast Guard training center in Yorktown, Virginia. My job as an instructor was to teach new members with the skills to service and repair all electrical equipment out in the fleet. During the students' 19 weeks of school, they would learn skills like teamwork, leadership, safety, as well as the basic electrical theory. This also included battery maintenance and troubleshooting. This is where I would use, in theory, a golf cart as it contained an entire ecosystem of learning about their capacity and how long they could last. One day, I wondered how far could a golf cart travel on a full charge. That is where the idea was born. After a lot of extensive research, I proposed my ideas to my fellow instructors, shipmates, and family, and pretty much anyone else that would listen. Most thought I was nuts, but humored me. Eventually, we formed a committee and came up with three goals. Stop the visit with as many veterans as we could, raise money for a veteran charity, and of course, be the first to drive across America in a golf cart. Did I mention it was going to be solar assisted with solar panels on the roof to extend the range? So without a golf cart, batteries, or any equipment, we started planning and campaigning for sponsors and donations. We set up banners and had t-shirts, wristbands, and coins to use at any local event, club, and organization that would have us. It was a slow start. We even borrowed a golf cart and put a solar panel on the roof just to have something to display at the events. A few months later, we finally got our first big break. After reaching out to several golf cart manufacturers, Club Car called us and said to come down to their factory in Georgia. They had a brand new golf cart for us. We also got a call from US Battery and they set us up with more than enough chargers and batteries to make the trip. We finally had two big companies sponsoring our project. Things really shifted into high gear. Fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy night. This is no ordinary golf cart. Electric powered and street legal, she will soon be traveling nearly 4,000 miles across country, all to raise money and awareness 
for the Wounded Warrior Project. Everybody thinks, what are you doing? <laughs> You're crazy. And uh, no, it's just one of those things that we're going to do, and we believe in it, and it's going to happen. Chief Petty Officer Ray Rayberg is an electrician at the Coast Guard Training Center in Yorktown. He had the idea after doing research on lithium-powered golf carts. After brainstorming with other off-duty and retired Coasties, Rayberg realized he could combine two of his passions. The nonprofit Go Karts was born. It comes with the part of the job that you just want to help people all the time. And I thought this was a unique way to take something that I learned from the Coast Guard and apply it to something like this. Starting in May, the plan is to drive the donated golf cart from the Coast Guard Training Center in Petaluma, California, through 13 states at a speed of 25 miles per hour, ending the journey back in Yorktown, a feat in itself. As has never been done before, nobody has ever driven a golf cart across America from coast to coast, at least not an electric one. The goal is to raise $50,000 for wounded warriors, along the way stopping at VFWs and VA hospitals, visiting with the men and women who risked everything. I want to hear their story. I want to hear not only the wounded warriors, but all veterans, and, and I want to get their story out. The trip is expected to last about 28 days and should end in Yorktown on Memorial Day weekend. Now to find out more about... To ensure our safety and be visible while on the road, a local car dealer donated the use of a new smart car and even had it body wrapped just for the occasion. We were set. Two members of our crew would drive all our equipment, golf cart and escort vehicle out to California and the rest of the team would fly out the day before we set sail. It's 4.30, and the sinks are talking to us. Hi, Rick. Whoa. Hey, going come upstairs. get upstairs. <laughs> uh, here we are, and uh, yeah, 4.30, and we're getting ready to go on the flight. Hey, go back upstairs. The Ryder Truck crew of two, with all of our equipment, made it safely to the Coast Guard's training center in Petaluma, California, along with the rest of us members that flew in. While on base, we did some shopping at the Coast Guard Exchange, and being in wine country, they actually had Coast Guard champagne for sale. So I bought two bottles, which might be good to celebrate with just in case we actually made it all the way home. We also used this time to unload and set up. Here we are. Uh, it's a... Uh day one of the wake up in Petaluma and uh, here we are so we're getting things ready and uh, we're gonna have a little barbecue later so uh, we'll have more pictures and all that fun stuff we'll see you. the chief petty officers association members at Petaluma threw us a nice welcome barbecue social and I even ran into someone I went to boot camp with 20 years earlier with everything staged and at the ready we hit the rack early to get a good night's sleep to be prepared to start our journey in the morning Hey, guess what? It's Monday morning and it's time for us to roll out. And you know what the cool thing is? Look behind us. Look at that. KGO TV in San Francisco came by and they're interviewing us. And you know what? We're ready to rock and we're going to be out of here soon. So uh, just wait and uh, we'll have some more videos soon. See you. Right out of the gate, we received our first flat on day one. 
It was bound to happen as we were riding the shoulders of the road where debris and trash end up. As prepared as we were, we had no jack and were stuck in the middle of nowhere. Thankfully, one of our crew members came up with a brilliant idea. Use the hydraulic tailgate of the rider truck to lift the cart and change the tire. We would go on to change only two more flats the entire trip. Good morning, it is day two. Day two of Carting for a Cause. We are pulling out of Air Station Sacramento and we're gonna be heading to Carson City today. Uh, we want to thank uh, the crew from Air Station Sacramento. They were great. They gave us a place to sleep and a place to put all of our stuff. So we're going to be hitting the road here in uh, probably about 30 minutes. So we'll be on the road again. So, hey, we'll uh, catch in with you later. Bye. As we were en route to Carson City, Nevada, we encountered our second challenge. We started having electric motor issues when going up steeper hills. The cart's motor would overheat and go into limp mode until it cooled down. We tried using a 12 volt fan to blow on the motor without success. We reached out to the engineers at Club Car for any guidance as we continued on at a slower pace. What's up guys, it is day three. We are in Reno. We've made it to Cart Barn and as you can see, we've got the cart right behind us. We're gonna get some, uh, get some things looked at and uh, see if we can't get this thing back on the road the way we want it to go. Um, so that Thankfully, the engineers at Club Car Express shipped a bigger motor to Reno and Cart Barn volunteered to swap them out. That new motor was a huge improvement and never had a problem with hills after that. With the cart being serviced, we continued with our mission to visit the Veterans Hospital in Reno. We were enlisted to help take our heroes outside for a stroll and give them some company. Hi, it's funny, you know, you come to these different places and you never know what's going to happen. If you look in the background, you're going to see all the members of the crew just standing around talking to people. Uh, we're over here at the casino to eat dinner and uh, we've yet to order. We've been here for almost a half hour because we keep having people come up and, uh, and talk to us. But you know what? That's what this is all about is talking to people and spreading the word. So we're really enjoying it. And uh, hey, that's what we do. So uh, <laughs> we'll say hi to everybody and we'll get out of here. What we didn't know was that the people we were talking to were members of the Coast Guard Combat Veterans Association attending their biannual meeting in Reno. What are the odds that we would be in the same town at the same time with the Coast Guard Combat Vets that only meet every two years in a different city? We were immediately invited to attend their banquet. When we walked into that room, it was like a time machine of shipmates of the past. The connection we had with our brothers and sisters was immediate and felt natural. We met Coast Guard members from wars and conflicts of the past. Even the last surviving member of the Coast Guard Cutter Taney, which also survived the Pearl Harbor attack during World War II. They also had an auction to fund their group including a silent auction of their mascot, Chihui, which traditionally, if you win, accept the responsibility for one year to keep the furry woodland creature. It even came with a photo album from very distinguished winners going back decades. One of our members actually served in a combat zone and was allowed to place a bid. Going back a year of planning this momentous project, it seemed like an uphill battle with many struggles, not knowing if we would make it or fail. That magical night in Reno, when our paths crossed with previous generations of Coast Guardsmen, it was like we had their blessings and everything was going to be okay.
how many miles an hour? Uh, we are going 9.4 right now. And we are almost All right, out of electricity. Here's your right. Here's your right. We are on empty on the batteries and we're just now pulling in. And we have actually made it to our hotel. And I don't know how, but we did. And we're making it to a parking place and everything. We need an extension Go ahead cord. And pull up to the front lobby thing right there. And an outlet. You might be asking, how are we able to drive long distances with a golf cart? During our test runs, we established that the cart, in ideal conditions, had a range of around 30 miles on a set of batteries. The solar panels added roughly 10 more miles to that range. We made up several battery boxes that could be disconnected quickly. We then moved the cart's batteries from underneath it to the pickup portion on top for easy swap outs. This worked great for our daily range of 100 to 200 miles. And then using the charger supplied by Delta Q, we would charge the used up batteries overnight when possible. Battery changeouts were quick and easy using the Rider Truck's hydraulic lift gate. We could change out a set of boxes in about 10 minutes and continue on. The longest we went on a set of batteries during their trip was 57 miles. Well, wouldn't you know it, we got a call from one of the combat vets in Reno that said we had the highest bid for Chihui. As we couldn't just turn around and get him, our combat vet caller and his wife volunteered to catch up with us somewhere along the road in Utah to bestow him on us. Chihui became another member of the team and unknowingly became our good luck charm. Hey, what's up, everybody? We've had our last update on day 10. We are now on day 14. So we need to cover 11, 12, and 13. And so, Ray, where have we been for the last three days? Oh, Travis, we've been everywhere. We were in beautiful Salida. Beautiful Salida. Colorado, where we were at the Hampton Inn. They put us up for free, and we also went over to Wallbangers and had a great free meal there, too. Absolutely. We want to thank Stephanie from, uh, from that establishment. They were some great people there. Uh, now we left Salida and we went up to Denver, correct? Oh, the Mile High City, Travis. Yes, Denver, Colorado. We actually went to the VA hospital on floors four, 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 five, and six. Visited all the veterans there. And I do believe we had somebody from USAA. John, I want to say. No, USAA. it was Mike. No, Mike, Mike, I was Mike. close. They, they sound alike. Anyway, they came down from USAA and they were able to uh, to give us a generous donation uh, to help our cause. Uh, and then uh, we had some people come in and some people leave while we were in Denver. And uh, once we left Denver, where'd we go? Oh, we, we cruised down out of Denver all the way to Ray, Colorado. Wait, Ray, did you say we went to Ray? Yes, but it was spelled with a W. Excellent, all a right. W. Excellent, W. R-A-Y. That sounds like it should be your radio station. It could be W-R-A-Y. 107.7. The Ray. The Ray. <laughs>
have been for four Coast Guard members. Yep, all active duty Coast Guard. We've been on the road for about 17 days and it's been nonstop. We haven't had a break. But at every stop along the road, they're reminded of why they're doing it. What, uh, what branch? What branch? Marine Corps. We're trying to raise 50000 for the Wounded Warrior Project and, uh, like I said, meet as many veterans as we can as possible and, and talk to them, hang out. A gesture that's not lost on the patients here at the VA hospital in Des Moines. We sat here for, since he got here, me and him talking just like we knew each other for, for our whole life. I'm from the air of the Vietnam that is lost air, but yet this brings out all groups. This is the, all the, the service people, even Coast Guard and, and National Guard. So it is, it's a good thing. It's, an, it's, I think it's great. We hear some funny stories. We hear some sad stories, but uh, we want to hear all the stories and, and let them know that the, the active duty guys out there and, and gals, we're, we're, we're still care about them and they're our greatest, greatest generation and they're not forgotten. In Des Moines, Crystal Kastner, Channel 13 News. The trip started on April 29th. The men plan to hit the East Coast on May 26th. They have to. By then, that's when their leave from the Coast Guard runs out. The next stop is Davenport, and you can learn more about their trip. And Over the halfway point, the journey started to take its toll. Back home, we all had families that were missed, shipmates covering our shifts at work, and our hometown still supporting us. We were still on mission to complete our three goals. Donations were coming in for our chosen charity, and the cart was running smoothly. But that last goal, to meet veterans and hear their stories, was more difficult than anticipated. Almost daily, we had local television news crews filming us in front of American Legions, VFWs, and wherever we could find a veteran. But what you don't see, what we couldn't photograph, and what we could not record were the disabled veterans in the hospitals, resource centers, and veteran homes. Stories were shared that can't be repeated and the pain, emotionally and physically, that these veterans were dealing with. We were all honored to hear their stories. We listened to as many as we could and did our best to make them smile. Those precious visits will be forever cherished with our group. We also met the nurses, caregivers, and counselors that actually took care of the veterans on a daily basis. They are truly special people and we're also honored to meet them. It took many volunteers, business contributions, donations, and a lot of vacation time used up to have this event become a reality. Even though you only see a few people in these videos, there were dozens of others that assisted and some wanted to make the trip but had to stand the watch on base while others were able to meet us on the road and take a turn at the wheel. It is day 19 of our carting for a cause trip and we are getting ready to say goodbye to the west and hello to the east. We'll be crossing the Mississippi River over into Illinois before we make our final approach into Chicago where we'll be stopping at the Coast Guard Station there in Chicago. Uh, from there we'll be traveling on to Michigan City and then heading over to Elkhart, Indiana and then into Ohio and so on and so forth. So we just wanted to check in. We want to thank Iowa uh, it was a great time we had at the VFW and the VA hospital at our two stops in Des Moines and Davenport. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good time. It's me and Nick, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye. This is our accommodations. <laughs> This is how, how good we live. So if anybody asks... Hey, can I borrow a pillow? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> so this is our pillow. I mean, this is our, <laughs> this is our accommodations. Thank you, Josh Post. Hey, Mr. Devoy, how's your pajamas working out over there? Yeah, I love this. Look, he's only a foot away. <laughs> he's only a foot away. Look at that.
Help me. Nick is driving. Help me. I can't get out. I just want to see my family. That's all I want to do. Help me. I gotta go. Here he comes. So hushed up the Johnny Sane. See how the main sand set. Sent for the captain ashore. We arrived at the VA hospital in Pittsburgh and met with veterans at Heroes Hall. This would be our last visit with the veterans of the trip we would do. There were two more stops before home, the National Maritime Center in Martinsburg, then on to Coast Guard headquarters in Washington, D.C. I may have made some extravagant claims prior to the trip, including we would drive the golf cart right up to headquarters to go see the Commandant of the Coast Guard. I also said we would drive across the states in a golf cart, so I thought it might be possible, right? With all the monuments and memorials we saw across America, we unknowingly were driving right past one that hit closer to home. One of our crew members had a plane ticket to fly on Flight 93. He ended up finding a better deal and he canceled Flight 93 and repurchased the flight that would have him leave and travel that exact same route only one day prior on September 10th, 2001. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rich like me I once was lost but now I'm found what blind but now I see twas grace that told my heart to fear and grease my fears relieved how precious did that grease of the hour I As we crossed into Virginia, a police cruiser took notice of our entourage and swiftly turned around and pulled the cart over. This was the first time we were stopped the entire trip. It took us traveling 26 days and several thousand miles just to get pulled over in our home state. He was curious to what we were up to, so we presented him with our carding coin and were back on the road, nervously approaching Washington, D.C. and our final mission of reaching Coast Guard headquarters. We left DC and was on the home stretch. We didn't know what to expect in Yorktown or if any would be there to meet us. Turns out family, friends, shipmates were there and cheered us on with a full escort heading into downtown. Even our Coast Guard combat veteran flew in to see us. 
We celebrated with the crowd that welcomed our arrival. We had one more thing to do before calling the mission complete. We got back in the cart, went up the road to the Coast Guard Training Center and did a victory lap around the gate just to make it official. We completed our three missions. In the aftermath, we raised enough donations for our cause and wrote a nice check to the Wounded Warrior Project. We returned the smart car back to the dealership and donated the rest of the equipment. The golf cart ended up being the Grand Marshal in Yorktown's 4th of July parade. After that, it was disassembled and put back in its original form and sold to the Disabled American Veterans Organization for $1 to make it legal as it was considered a registered vehicle. They auctioned it off for $5,000 and reported back that the money from the auction went towards the local homeless veterans. Chihui did his time on base, rotating between the car crew that bid on him, and after a year, he was released into the wild and eventually found his way back to the Coast Guard combat veterans to be auctioned off again. <laughs> Until we meet again.